morning. Boom, boom. Good morning. Nice to see you all. Uh, after having carefully considered all of the options, let's have a great day today. Um, how many of you uh, have ever done any, have experienced me doing generative trance work before? How many of you have not? How many of you are lifting your hands each time? <laughs> so, as long as they're different hands. So, looks like about half and half. What, what I really, my goal over the next uh, 90 minutes is to give you a sense of generative trance and really be framing it both in terms of how it is a representative of generative change work, but also some of the unique things that it brings to the generative change work. And I want to uh, start with a poem, as usual. And this is a, a poem by Rilke, the great German poet. And um, I'm going to read it in English, and then I'm going to ask um, Eva um, to give a somatic rendition in German. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll hear this notion of what we're really looking to do in gender trance is to open a space where all the significant players in the performance system are welcomed. Okay. And we'll see that would be your present state, your desired state, your resources, um, the obstacles, and any additional things. We're looking to open a hospitable generative space and then make sure that each of these pieces are valued, each of these pieces are properly named, and then most importantly, that the aesthetic field, the connection, um, is optimized. And I would just again propose this is what happens in cooking, this is what happens to uh, in the sports team. Who won the World Cup this year, by the way? Germany? Oh, no. We wish. Uh -huh. Viva la France. That's right. Are we going to win it back, though? No. <laughs> Why did France win the World Cup? They cheated, right? <laughs> I think so. They had great players, and, and the players were playing in a beautiful team together. So that's really what we're looking at in terms of generative work, and we're gonna see how trance opens this very fluid meta state where all of the players of the system can be held and then integrated into a powerful way. So here's what Roca, almost 100 years ago, um, actually over 100 years ago, had to say, has to say about this. He says, she who reconciles the ill-matched threads of her life and weaves them gratefully into a single cloth. It's she who drives the loud mouths from the hall and clears it for a different type of celebration. Where the one guest is you. In the softness of evening, it's you that she receives. You are the partner of her loneliness and the unspeaking center of her monologues. With each disclosure, you encompass more and she stretches beyond what limits her to hold you. Now in the original mother tongue. Rainer Maria Rilke. Wer seines Lebens vieler Widersinne versöhnt und dankbar in ein Sinnbild fasst, der drängt die Lärmenden aus dem Palast, wird anders, festlich und du bist der Gast, den er an sanften Abenden empfängt. Du bist der Zweite seiner Einsamkeit, die ruhige Mitte seinen Monologen. Und jeder Kreis um dich gezogen spannt ihn, den Zirkel aus der Zeit. Du bist der Zweite seiner Einsamkeit, die ruhige Mitte seinen Monologen. Und jeder Kreis um dich gezogen spannt ihm 
den Zirkel aus der Zeit. Hm. Thank you. Thank you. So, I want to spend uh, the f about the first 25 minutes on an overview of generative trance. Then I would like to do a 30-minute demo. And I'm going to ask my, some of my team to come up uh, so we can do a demonstration of how we're working with uh, systemic parts and what trance, how re trance really supports that. And then we'll leave a half hour or so for Q&A and I'll ask my, my team, uh, which is uh, Mike and Weikai and Jorg and Eva, who have done many, many, many years of generative trance, to participate in, in that conversation. So, in the tradition of hypnosis, uh, there's this recognition that we have two different intelligences. Um, we've got this social, cognitive, verbal, external world-based intelligence, don't leave home without it. It's the one that understands how things work in the world, it understands roles, it develops uh, certain uh, ways to achieve things. Uh, it's the mature, verbal, cognitive mind in the head. And, and for ordinary activity, this part of your intelligence is, works fine as the lead system. So if you need to get a cup of coffee, you don't have to go into a generative trance. Okay? If, if you need to go down to the post office and, and uh, buy some stamps, you don't have to go into a generative trance. Just go get the damn coffee and buy the stamps. But there are other times in our life, as I was uh, beginning to mention yesterday, where the, the mind in the head, the mind that just knows how things are supposed to work in the outside wor world um, are, is inadequate. And so there what we begin to reference is a second intelligence that really lives, at, at least its, its primary base, lives deep in the body. Um, it is more of what Robert would call the dreamer mind. Um, it knows how to play. It has a sort of logic where anything can turn into anything and you can go anywhere from anywhere. That's pretty good, right? So a dream is an obvious example of that. So if I told you, uh, I had a dream last night and in the dream I was an eagle and I was flying around as the eagle and then this, the moon began to come out and another eagle, no, it was a hawk, began to appear and we did all these interesting things. What would be your diagnosis for me? What would be your psychiatric diagnosis for somebody who's saying that they're seeing birds when they close their eyes? Would you say, that's interesting. I'm a little jealous. Hey. So in that mind, you know that a dream image can turn into anything. You know in that dream or a poem or a song is that you could just pick up and go to another place just like that. So we're saying that's the other base for our creative intelligence. And whenever we need to do something new or whenever we need to integrate difficult relationships or whenever we need to heal, that other intelligence is really, really important. I learned hypnosis especially from Milton Erickson. I met Erickson when I was 19. I was still a student here. Um, but I also worked in the Stanford Hypnosis Lab for five years, and so I've been working in the field for a long time. And it's important to note that we're using hypnosis to create new possibilities. Okay? But there's a lot of ways to be able to do that. When we look into the quantum mind, we see there are no fixed structures. There are no intrinsic unchangeable structures. And so that one of the things that that means is there's no single unconscious mind. Uh, Freud looked into the unconscious mind and what did he see? Sex, drugs, rock and roll. He says, you want to have sex with your mother. You too. 
You too. And you want to kill your father. You too. Hey, that's interesting. <laughs> Jung looked into the unconscious. He saw a vast pantheon of archetypal beings. Erickson looked into the unconscious and he saw um, a, a vast repository of experiential learnings. The Buddhists looked into the unconscious and they say, nothing's there. <laughs> but it's sparkling, it's empty but luminescent. So every tradition has so many different versions of this other consciousness. It's important to know that because it's a great example of, of what consciousness at the deeper level is. It, it's a set of potentials. It's a set of possibilities. And depending on how you connect with it, that creates it in a certain way. So this notion of trance is something we use when we hear the words come out of the conscious mind, I don't know. These were Milton Erickson's favorite words. Now, when a, a patient or a student said, I don't know Dr. Erickson, he would get this big smile. He said, I'm so glad that you don't know. Because he knew this was the doorway into new learning. I say, I was a young, young man. He was this old guy in the last six years of his life when I studied with him. And the times he said, I don't know, were too, too many to count. People would come from all over and say, Dr. Erickson, just what is possible using hypnosis with this type of problem? I don't know. How about this question? I don't know. We would go <clears throat> after class and compare notes. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. But he would usually add, but I'm very curious to discover just what is possible for you here today. So we're, we're thinking of trance as a resource when we come to those places on our path where we don't know how to continue in our usual ways. Okay? And then we say, well, there's a, a lot of ways. That's Erickson in the 1950s, by the way. When, if you use the word trance, most people think of it in, in this, what I call the first generation, which is booga, booga, booga. Which is, if you want to have deep experiential learnings, we've got to take a hammer and knock your conscious mind out, because your conscious mind is the enemy of creativity. We've got to knock you out, and then we're going to program solutions into you. You will stop smoking. Say, I don't even smoke. You see, it's working already. <laughs> but this notion of hypnosis as one person taking over another person's mind is unfortunately still the prevailing idea, and it's why I don't use the word hypnosis anymore. I call the work generative trance because hypnosis is a more recent Western traditional way to work with trance, and it is inextricably in both the personal and uh, the uh, professional mind um, associated with one person controlling another. This is the problem, not the solution. So in this traditional idea, the, the conscious mind is an idiot, you need to knock it out with a hammer, and the unconscious is an idiot, you have to tell it what to do. Right? Uh, how generative do you think that map is? Mm -hmm. Erickson had made a radical shift in what I call the second generation, and he began to talk about trance as natural. It's, it, you don't need a hypnotist to go into trance. It's an integral part of the fabric of, of human consciousness. And he talked about the unconscious as deeply, deeply wise and intelligent. Still, however, and his work was developing in the 1940s, 1950s, I came of age in the late 60s where it was a radically different cultural shift. But Erickson had the idea the conscious mind is still an idiot. So rather than taking a hammer 
to knock out the conscious mind, you would bypass it with indirect suggestion. You would do dissociation. So you'd want to get the conscious mind out of the way and then get the deep wisdom of the unconscious into play. So, and, and he did incredible, incredible work. And the other radical thing was he said, the, the only way you're going to have sustainable change is if the communications are basically in the language of that person's self-identity. You know, what we see, for example, especially in hypnosis, you see in the history of hypnosis is waxing and waning. It gets popular, wow, full body levitation, uh, past lives, this stuff's really amazing. And then usually the changes only last as long as a New Year's resolution. What's the longest New Year's resolution last for you? Ten days? You know, you got the, bought all that exercise program to... Uh, equipment to exercise and lose weight, and then January 10th, it's gathering dust. So he said that if you develop a solution, but it is, if it's not in the language of that system, what we call a psychological immune system will activate and reject it. Okay, for better or worse, you have an identity. And the only thing that's going to really be sustainable, anything new learning, is going to be something that integrates and honors the identity that you have built up over many years, in some ways many, many, many generations. So Erickson was amazingly brilliant. Uh, there, there's rarely a day that goes by that I'm, I'm not reminded of, of something that, uh, that he uh, did that contributed immensely to me personally or professionally. But the thing that I've heard so many times that uh, is really uh, unfortunate is I've heard so many patients and students of his say, what I learned from Erickson is that the next time the shit hits the fan, that's a technical diagnostic term, the next time the crisis hits, and I always warn clients, it's always a short distance away, you know, that I will go into trance and I will hear Milton's voice tell me what to do. Really? Is that the best we can do, is have some dead guy's voice? We shut the fuck up? Jesus Christ, I'm trying to concentrate. So Erickson, in a sense, represented a generative conscious mind. You know, he represented this conscious mind that could be in conversation with the unconscious in this mutually respectful way that could blend with it so that out of this reciprocal conversation, uh, you, could, you could give birth to new babies, to, to new creative forms. So the question remains then, is this thing that Erickson was able to do, is it only something that Erickson could do? If so, we're in trouble because he's dead. And the best we could do is wear necklaces of purple wheelchairs around our necks. Is it something, a second possibility, that only highly licensed professionals, that would be me, um, should be allowed to do to talk to the unconscious because one false move and they go on a, a homicidal uh, 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 a raving attack? Or is it something that each person has the capacity to some significant degree to cultivate within themselves? Generative trance, the work that um, I've been developing, really talks about that. So our client in the genitive trance is not the unconscious, but it's really this relationship or this conversation between the cognitive verbal social self, which is the manager and the avatar for who you are in the world, and then this deep dreamer creative um, uh, um, consciousness that's connected to everything and, and has infinite possibilities. This is, of course, if, if you really did any modeling 
of creative performers. You would not hear in any creative performers, I just do it from my unconscious. Well, you, what you would model from any creative performer is what is the nature of that conversation that they have um, cultivated and they practice regularly so that they get the best of both worlds and they're able to do the generative work. So that's what we're thinking of. And so your job as the practitioner is not to hypnotize them or put them into a trance, but to be able to invite this conversation around whatever intention that they have. To be able to have this sense that the person wants something, and I'm, I'm looking to create positive conditions to allow them to, to creatively achieve their goal in some sustainable way. And so we realize you've got to have both of these minds. The elevators have to be going up and down. Okay. So there we begin to see, now, now we come into some of these generative change presuppositions, and, and I'm adding one from the, the, the generative coaching. We say that what we're looking to do to coach somebody through this creativity process is see we've got these three levels of creativity. The first is original mind, this is what the Buddhists call original mind, empty and luminescent, and you are the light and the way. Okay? So at the deepest level is that you are light. Okay? And if you think, oh my God, this guy is such a Californian. Listen to the metaphors people use when they're describing the best of what they experience in life. I hear it in every cultural language. The bright, the shining, the brilliant, the radiant. And you see it in people. When people are in a generative state, you see light coming from them. So this is the base. This is what brings the animation. This is what brings the human presence to all of the different forms that you're using to try to create something. You need to connect to the light. Okay? And when you're connected to that light, um, everything is sparkling. Okay? So this is something that we can do practically, as we'll see. That then opens up to the second level of our creative form, which is what we're beginning to talk about yesterday is the quantum field. Okay? And we're saying at this deepest level is that everything that has ever uh, opened up in form over, you could say, the last 13.8 billion years is in this undivided, beautiful song. That's the creative unconscious. And as many people have pointed out, the patterning of this undiv undivided wholeness is in terms of potential or deep structures or archetypes, there's no fixed content. Okay? And how do we understand this? Well, we humans are the creator beings. And in order to create things, we need the deep structures, but we need the freedom to be able to create our own unique way, which is what we need in order for learning and development to occur. You can't do it like somebody else did it. You have to bring it into the world in a way that is unique to you. So we see it's a big difference between uh, humans and other mammals. I mean, how many ways can a dog have sex? You have doggy style and doggy style and doggy style human beings infinite possibilities. How many ways can a dog eat? <laughs> How many ways can humans eat? You know, one of my favorite things is going around the world and experiencing all the different trance rituals that different cultures have for eating. My favorite is China, and I've gotten my hands slapped so many times in China. And I used to have a Chinese wife, and you know, in China they just give you that one little bowl said, are you kidding? And you're only allowed, because the food belongs to the table, uh, to the community, you're only allowed two bites maximum. So the American way is, oh, that looks like good. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> yeah. And once you get to the second 
uh, uh, a bite is, and you have to wait and watch it going around your favorite dish. And I thought it was just me. You know, until finally I asked the, I was eating with a group of Chinese. I said, Do you, are you guys watching your favorite dish go around? It doesn't look like they all went, yeah. <laughs> we just had years of practice. But there's so many different ways of doing each basic human activity. And there, there are hundreds and hundreds of these archetypal basic human activities. How do I create safety? How do I make connection? How do I experience communion with another person? How do I have my boundaries with other people? Um, how do I heal a, a, a negative experience? Uh, these are questions that are not unique to you. These are universal questions for which you need to be creating responses at, at, every, at every moment in your path. So the unconscious contains suggestions. It's kind of what we see in genetics now, what's called epigenetics. Epigenetics are a set of deep structure suggestions. And then depending on the environment and what you're actually doing, this set of possible forms collapses into one particular actuality. And that's what we call the conscious world. Okay? So what we're saying for creativity is we need to have a flow between these three levels. You need to be in just open, free, empty, light. You need to be in infinite possibilities. I could do it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. And then I need to choose. Because infinite possibility sounds good, but in the end it's not a fully human activity. You know, you probably all know people who, who are in that, oh, everything's okay. You know, you say, well, what would you like to do tonight? Oh, I'm okay with anything. Everything's okay with me. <laughs> Would you like to go eat somewhere? Oh, sure, I can do that or not. <laughs> Everything is possible for me. You know, what kind of food do you want? Oh, I can eat anything, except it has to be vegetarian. But other than that... <laughs> so you know people like this, right? So, so the conscious mind is really important because it takes things out of potential and puts them into actuality. However, once you make a commitment, it's just a matter of time before your map no longer it works. Isn't that great to know? That whatever works is only short-lived. And by virtue of its working, it has shifted the conditions of the state and it has changed you. So you need to do something different in that next state. Look at it in the intimacy of a relationship, what the first stage would be, you know, and then what the second stage and, and the third stage and so forth. So we see creativity as this process of, of moving for some continuous um, process in the world. I, I just, I'm on my path, I do this, and I'm just doing it pretty well. And then I come to these places of crises where I have to change my representational maps. That's where we use trance. Right? So what trance is helping you to do is get out of your attachment or your fixation to this is the way it looks, this is who I am, this is what I should do, this is what is possible and go back and swim in the ocean for a little while and find some new connections and then be able to come back out. So when we look uh, particularly at uh, trance, just going to uh, emphasize this, I think it would be good. We're, we're talking about these filters that we were talking about last night. The unconscious, infinite possibilities, you know, so I have my fierceness, for example, which is a universal. And then if my fierceness, my fire, 
is coming through a filter that's like this, it would probably get created as anger. Okay? So the fierceness, which would be a deep structure, a universal, an archetypal, that has so many different forms and so many different values, depending on how my filter is set, and while I'm in a coach or a crash, it comes out one particular way. So what we're looking to do is to be sort of right on the, on, on the meeting point of the two worlds. So at the one level, we can feel this can happen in so many ways. I can think of this in so many ways. This can look like this, it can look like this. And on the other one, I gotta take action. I gotta choose. I gotta put myself out in the world. So that state of both and is what we call a genitive trance. And what you're learning to do is steer that middle way so that you know when to tilt a little bit more into quantum. I need new possibilities. I need to let go. And when to tilt a little bit more into commitment into a particular action. Make sense? So when we talk about these filters, here's that word, hold on. Um, one of the main things that we're talking about is the prototype filter is what we call these, what I call a performance system or what Robert and I call a systemic holon. And here's the classic examples. We've already uh, talked about them. And a holon is something that is whole but contains many different parts. So it's a part-whole relationship. Okay? And one of the, the important properties of a holon is that each part of the whole is whole within itself. This is that each part has generative autopoetic qualities. So that means if, if we're on a team here, so we've got the five of us and we're on a team, our team is a whole on. But the members of the team are all whole ons themselves. So we've got these, these properties where you are both fragmented and, a, and just a piece, but you're also whole at the same time. Isn't that great to know? So what we're looking at then is that what people are using to create their experience are these filters. And the main prototype filters are these, what we call these performance whole lines. So uh, here is the basic elements of in uh, generative coaching, generative trance, about what we, what we think of a, a, a deep structure performance system uh, in terms of. So we have a goal, we have your present state, we have your ideas of action plans, we have resources that are going to be integral, and then we have our, our best friend, our obstacles and our problems. So what we're trying to understand when we're engaging with a person in a conversation for change is what are those pieces for this system? It could be an individual system, it could be a dyadic system, it could be a bigger uh, company system. But th this is a deep structure um, prototype that we're using to understand. What we say in generative change is the same performance filter can either be producing problems or solutions depending on how it's held with human presence, i.e., whether it's in a coach state or a crash state. Okay. So uh, this was Milton... Damn it! Stop it! Oh, sorry. <laughs> What's going on with my... Ah, so, yeah, and there's, upon hearing Trump was elected, so can, can you, uh, so, so what we're seeing is the performance system starts producing problems when it enters into a crash state. And we think about, uh, again, the performance system, we've got the, 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 the cosmic light, excuse my California terms, We've got the, all of the different possibilities, and then we've got the specific action. 
What a crash is, is especially it's stopping breathing and it's squeezing muscles. So this flow from light to uh, dreamer to realist is now blocked. So the Chinese and uh, Japanese call this block chi. Okay. Uh, in the West, Hans Selye in Montreal in the 1930s coined this term stress or chronic stress. Same in my uh, understanding, it's exact same as block chi. Okay. Selye was working as a young uh, resident, medical resident in the hospital and they were uh, get, uh, having them go around and to learn differential diagnosis. This patient has this disease, this patient has this disease, so forth. And Selye said, I couldn't help but notice everybody looks sick, including the doctors and the nurses. Everybody looks sick. And the fact that they seemed to all look sick suggested that there was some common underlying process to chronic illness that you see. And he said that was chronic stress. Up until that point, stress was basically a mechanical term. It was the amount of pressure that, that was put uh, physically on a system. Now we, we all, you know, in the general public, we say, oh, you, you, ha you have to reduce stress. Okay? Block chi, stress, uh, same thing. And, Wakai, can you help me? Maybe just manually turn that. Okay. And next one. Okay. So what we're saying in terms of the creativity model is that we need this flow from light to um, uh, Monet painting to specific actuality. And you have to feel the flow going through those. A crash state is closing the gateway between your conscious performing state. What do I do? Here I am. I've got to succeed. I've got to achieve this. It blocks the gate between that part of you and the part that has infinite possibilities. Okay. So that's why we say in trance, relax. It's not to drool. It's not to fall on the ground. It's to be able to start releasing opening your chi, unblocking the chi. Now we have this capacity to be able to take these different parts of the performance system and hold them sort of like in this ocean where they're all swimming and, and, and sparkling and every element in there can be experienced and expressed in an infinite number of different ways. One of the great teaching examples from Milton Erickson that's so funny but so illuminative was the woman in the 1950s who came to see him. She was secretary in a large uh, company. She said, I'm going to kill myself. He said, why? She points to her teeth. And she's got a big gap in between her teeth. She said, isn't it obvious? And what, what do you think, what does it mean if you have a gap in your teeth? Isn't it obvious? What would you say it means? I don't know. She was absolutely sure that the, blot, that the gap in her teeth meant she was so ugly, which meant that no man would ever desire her, which meant she would never get married, which meant... Her life would have no value, which meant she had to kill herself. Isn't it obvious? So that's what we mean by block chi. So you have gap in the teeth and you have a fixed meaning that you can't get away from. And that now you're doomed to just keep repeating the same old, same old. So Erickson said, well, before you kill yourself, I wonder if you wouldn't mind making a commitment to do a few things. She said, fine. First commitment, I want you to go home and I want you to practice every night filling your mouth with water and learning how to squirt water through your teeth until you become a good sharpshooter. And she was shocked this was a frivolous task for somebody who was going to kill themselves. But he said, you made a commitment. 
So for the next two weeks, she practices, and she gets really good about hitting the target through the water in her teeth. Now, most of these Erickson stories are so funny, but sometimes our laughing brings us away from, what's he doing there? What sort of shift is he doing? This is the shift that we're doing in generative trance. We have a pattern, a gap in the teeth. It's really part of the emotional identity, and it's got a very fixed meaning. Erickson, I'm pretty sure, took that pattern, the gap in the teeth, brought it into some space where he could hold it like a jewel, where he could be able to see gap in the teeth, infinite possible meanings, let me count the ways. And he could be able to see the gap in the teeth until he found one particular map that would support what her intention was, was to uh, find some um, intimacy relationship, squirting water through the teeth. Does that make sense? Okay. This is what trance allows you to do. You begin to see gap in the teeth. It could be this way, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, and it could be this way. It could go up here with it. Scientifically, we call this play. Next, he, he, she came back, and he, said, he found out from talking with her that there was a young man at uh, work who seemed to be a little bit interested in her because every time she went to get a, a little uh, water at the drinking fountain, guess who shows up? And she's absolutely, uh, he couldn't possibly, but. So he says, okay, I want you to go back to, the, to work and I want you to notice when that young man goes to get a drink of water. When you see him going to the drinking fountain, I want you to run up. I want you to fill your mouth with water and hide behind the wall so that when he leans down, you reach out and give him a good squirt and then run like the devil. And again, she's, he says, you made a promise. So she goes back. He goes to the drinking fountain. She jumps out, zaps him, runs away. He chases her, grabs her, asks her out for a date. And as in all good Erickson stories, they're married shortly thereafter and have six little water squirters. <laughs> but this, this is what we're, this is the essence of generativity. That each challenge, each relationship, each feeling, each memory has a million different pathways of, of, of experiencing it, uh, finding the meaning to it, using it to bring yourself more fully into the world. But you need to have that generative state so you have the focus on the one hand, but you have that sort of relaxed um, uh, sort of ocean vibration on the other. That's what we're looking to find is that sort of that middle way and that balance point. Okay, any questions? I see. <laughs> yes, the young man in the third row. Sorry? Uh, the crash state of the... The crash... I'm, I'm sorry, but all my rock concerts as a... Kid, the, the crash date of the other one? Or, per okay. or person in the shop or whatever in Great. daily life? Well, uh, big question, but the, the first answer is nothing. Because we make our living from our mirror neurons. As when a client goes into a crash date, the coach goes into one too. So I can't tell you how many times people say, oh, God, this client is, is doing this. What do I do? What do I do? I say nothing. Because if you are thinking about uh, how to change the system, but you have become uh, inducted into the system, you're just going to be feeding, feeding it more. So the thing is, crash, and then what we do is go to coach state. 
And what that means is I see you, I see you, I feel you going to crash. And this is a lot to me from Aikido training, is that it brings me here, here, here. So I see the crash. I recognize that if I keep focusing on the crash, I will get inducted into it. So I see it, center, drop, open, curiosity, welcome. Okay. We have four m relational mantras that uh, both in generative trance and generative coaching, when we come across a negative pattern, we're really practicing from a coach state, that's interesting. That's interesting. I'm sure that makes sense. Something's trying to wake up. Something's trying to heal. Something is trying to be created. Welcome. Welcome. So it, uh, it's a skill challenge seeing what state do you need to be in to authentically be able to welcome something that is disturbing, it's messing things up, it's unexpected, and it seems to be o only a problem. Okay. So first coach state, then a sort of a, a relational sort of meditation on the four mantras, and then we're going to look to invite it in in some ways. What I'd like to do is a, a little demo, and um, what I, the way I'd like to do the demo um, is to be able to uh, lay out the different systemic parts so that we can see, for example, the answer to your question uh, as well as the answer to some r uh, related questions. And um, I'm going to be asking uh, some of my uh, uh, IGC um, uh, leader teams uh, to help me with this. Um, first, uh, we need to have a, a client and, and just just to make sure you, you know what you're getting into, I'm going to ask you to, to focus on some challenge that you're facing. And we're going to have about 25 minutes to do it. So it'll be a, a shortened period than a usual session. And what I'm going to be um, uh, in, inviting uh, the person to do is describe each part of the system. And then I'm going to ask the, the four uh, team members to rep to be representatives of those systems. So I think you can see it's it's what the what I'm thinking in my head when I'm doing trance. Okay. So any volunteers? Okay. So Chris, uh, come on up. And can we get uh, five? Uh, not these high chairs. I know we're in that NLP tradition. Uh, we got all those high chairs. Yeah. So we need. Uh, yeah, five. Maybe. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll go down here so we don't get blinded by the light. Okay. Uh, thank you, Julie. Uh, Jorg, you're going to come up too. So just want to introduce uh, Jorg from Germany. And Jorg has been doing gender trance for how long? Since you were three years old, right? Yeah. yeah. And not only does is he part of the German team, There's but no Jorg has been in China no place uh, virtually it. every year. So he's a part of the China team because he's a Qigong teacher and he was going to China to study with his masters. And so I got him into trance camp in China starting 13 years ago. Uh, Wei Kai, a, 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 I think you're getting to know from <laughs> Taiwan. And uh, he's part of the China team. Uh, Mike, who many of you heard this morning. Mike has been there from the very beginning. Uh, very first time I came to China 13 years ago. And he's been at every workshop I've ever done there, right? And I'm there at least 40 days a year. Uh, and Eva, uh, who has been doing generative trance since you were two years old, right? And Eva not only uh, uh, is the head of, is our sponsor in, for generative coaching, generative trance in Germany, uh, but she's done a lot of stuff in South America and many places, Russia, Spain, China, China, yeah. Do we have a, a microphone that you guys can pass in? Uh, and so if we have this one for, another, this one for Krisa. 
Where, where's the other one of these? It's on these three. Isn't there one of this? Isn't there a second? Oh, you have it. Sorry. I have one. Yeah, yeah. It's a natural okay. part of me. It's so, Madame, please come into my office. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, we're just going to set this up for a second, and then, as I say, it, if it's okay with you, I'm going to be asking the team to be different representatives of the system that you're talking about that you're working with and trying mm -hmm. to upgrade to a, to a generative system. Mm -hmm. So what seems to be the problem? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the problem um, seems to be, um, I want to do a lot of video online, but I'm not, stop, something is stopping me from actually doing what I want to do. And, and you hear, uh, maybe you could turn that, yeah. You, you can hear two parts right, right out of the barrel. Okay? There's something I want, and then immediately she says it, her, her forehead goes, and it says, but something is blocking the path. You shall not pass. <laughs> That's interesting. So you could say, that would be the, the obstacle, or that would be the crash, but we're saying that's where all of her power is. Okay? It's in that part that, uh, what was, the, who's the wizard in uh, the Hobbit movies? Gandalf. 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 You shall Gandalf. not pass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's something you, you really want. Mm -hmm. And if you could say that in, five words or less, you know, what I really want to create in my life is, and then you got, if you had five words. What I want to create into my life is an online public presence. Okay. Most people exceed the five word limit, so you're, you're good. And what we would be doing if we had a full session is breathing that up and down, what we call the vertical channel. Because if you just have it in your verbal mind, it won't get very far. As the coach, you're breathing that through. Everything, every part of the system that they present, you're breathing it through your space. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the generative mind here. It's not there, it's not there. It's in, in our, the space that we're holding. How much on a scale of one to 10 do you want that? It's an eight. Super. And may I ask where that number eight comes from? Come from here, here, here. It comes from here. Oh. Mm, that's nice to know. <laughs> and you see there's herself here who's verbal. And then when she starts talking about her dream, it's, it's really located more here. So let's just take a few minutes and I've been sort of semi-rushing through. And let's just breathe. And Say there's something deep, 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 inside. That really wants to create that online program. And just want to say to that presence, welcome. So this language, this nonverbal language, is one of the main languages of trance. We're slowing, we're saying, if we want to have the interconnected space of infinite possibilities, limbic resonance is the first language. That touches the body, it opens the space. It allows the flow between each member of the tea ceremony. Okay? So it's not 
I'm hypnotizing you, but we're looking to open a conversational space that's deep, that's wide, that's resonant, that can welcome multiple contradictions. Good to know. And then um, you're saying when, when you start to do that, and at what point you say, yes, yeah, something I really want to do, what, what seems to happen then that, that it blocks you or takes you away or makes it hard for you to, to realize that? There's a sense of, I am not ready yet. I'm not ready? I'm not ready yet. I have to study more, practice more, be perfect, and I'm not there yet. Mm. So there's a, another presence. That comes forward. But I'm, I'm not ready. And where do you feel that presence? Now she takes a, you see that breath? That's the signal she's opening her system to hold the different parts of her performance. So that's what we're looking for. It's when this happens, if, if you notice this, when she started talking about it, ching, ching. This is crash. This means I'm not willing or able to let this part of my being into my creative conversational field. And so we're just looking to stroke, open, get a musical field where every part of the system is welcome. And Chris, what, what do you notice there? There's a sensation on the back of my neck. Uh -huh. Like, hey, where are you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Don't you find that interesting? It is. So let's just breathe with that. And by the way, I wouldn't consider that the primary center, because this is more of a muscular thing. And a center is more of a subtle sensation. So this is usually responding to some external criticism. You know, that it's or here, here, here. Those are secondary responses. I start to do it, and something in my internal field says no. And that's the response, but we want to welcome that. See that breath, this feedback, okay, I'm willing to go a little bit further. What we're looking to do is create a space of what the Buddhists call equanimity, so that we have equal welcoming and connection to every part of the system. There's what we would call the good self, hey, let's succeed, let's do this video. And then we call the negative self, I'm not ready. We're saying those are two peas in a pod, that those are sisters, that that's the creative team. And what we need to do is create a space so that each member of the team, and there'll be others, are, are in the same space and they're, they're in the, playing the same piece of music. And that's where you'll begin to find their underlying interconnectedness and their underlying systemic unity. That's where all the good stuff happens. What do you notice going on as I talk about that? When you pointed like that, uh -huh. there was a sense of a shaking little girl. Yeah. Wow. So when you start thinking about making this next step, this little girl says, hey, what about me? I'm sure she's coming for some. Mm. 
important reason. So m maybe we can see what it might be like to move forward with a way to not only honor, but to have a positive connection to each of those different parts. That sound interesting? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what I'm going to do is, is ask um, the team here to be representatives of the core constituent parts of a, of a generative trance conversation. First is I'm going to ask Eva to be the Earth Mother. It's quite a stretch for her. <laughs> and, and it's another way of, of talking about the divine feminine or a, a, a coach field. Would it be okay if she was behind you? Or where do you think if she was like bringing just this, this sense of, of um, complete healed presence where you were okay in every, every part of your life, would, would she be behind you? Would she be... Yeah, behind me seems like the Super. a good position. Yeah, and if you were just to show a somatic model and, and really take a moment to slip into your embodied wisdom. So yeah, a nice somatic model for my divine feminine coach field would be. And you're asking this and as a coach you're looking, teach me, teach me, teach me, teach me. So you want to support it there but also absorb it here so you can mirror it back. And so Eva is standing up, I think you're going to hear her. And would she be touching you? Or? There, there could be some movement. Some movement. But would it feel good if she had her hand on your shoulders? Or? From time to time, whether you feel it. From time to time, that's good. So this is the first step of generative change. So we've done a little conversation about what do you want, what are some of the different pieces, and then for the enactment of the change process, we go to this first. And you know, the, you should have, as a generative change practitioner, a toolbox of many ways to open this. You should have at least 10, mm -hmm. uh, and then you're always interested mostly in how does the person do it when you need to feel most connected to yourself where do you go? What are some of the things you do? Because those will tend to be the most helpful. So this is the first. And you take a moment just to feel that. Whenever we see even the slightest crash, and we're looking for this, this, and every client has their own telltale patterns, we stop what we're doing in terms of focusing on a performance and we go back to connect to, to the coach field. Right? Because as soon as she goes into lockdown, the, the game's over. She's just going to repeat a negative past. So this is the underlying level. And even though Eva is, is here, she's, her presence and your presence as a coach and a person's presence inside, it's something that extends to the, to the whole field, inside the body and all the relationships around. That's good. So let's start there. I know that whenever you want to prepare yourself for something important, it's good to start. That's good. With that feeling of connection within you and the beautiful sort of protective, loving field all around you. And Chris, if I could ask you on a, a scale of um, 
one to, to ten, how, how much do you feel that positive state? Nine. Okay. We need it at least at a seven. It, any time it drops under a seven, we, we need to um, reactivate it. Because if she's trying to do something and her coach state is under a seven, it, it will be almost for sure that her performance will not be generative. Okay. This is what the coach is doing. You're creating the conditions and making sure that each part of the system is, is connected well. And when that happens, you know good things will happen. So then the second step um, in the generative change process, the sense of what I really, 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 really love to create in my life is, and just sense what that is. It, it, it could be the same thing. Sometimes after you talk for 10 minutes, it's shifted. The person's tuned to a different level. And that quiet means she's sort of moving through the quantum field. She's sort of letting herself just feel of all these different things that I would really want to be. I want to give myself time to let one emerge that has the deepest resonance. What I want most to create in my life is to share the knowledge. To share. Would it be in your professional life or your personal life? Or? Professional. Super. Isn't that great to know? Yes. And I'm going to ask one of the other team members, I don't know if you have a preference of uh, Jorg or Weikai or Mike, to be the representative of your goal? Waikai. Waikai. So, and would it be okay if we, we sort of, you just were watching, feeling the system in front of you, would it be better to, to see them going towards the future that way, so you could be behind it, or facing you? Facing me. Great, okay. So, you're going to be this presence in Krisa, this is, I, I really, really, really want to share professionally, in my professional life. And what would be his somatic model? So now as the representational part, you want to be one foot in the trance world, but also one foot in the social world. Because you don't want it just to be in a fantasy world. You want it to be in both worlds equally. Okay. So you got this part of you. And as you think about that, just notice on a scale of one to ten, how much do you feel that, that connection that Eva was holding with you. So we did a little piece. Let's go back and check. Has it changed the coach? Sometimes it deepens, sometimes it lightens. Oh no, it's definitely a 10. Super. Great. It's a 10. And just take a moment and notice what a 10 feels like. One of those nice things that Erickson used to say is you can memorize that feeling and be able to remember it any time and anywhere. So the reason I would talk like that is just to keep that 
sort of quantum field open. So the ideas are dipping down into the ocean and back into the real world. That's, that's the creative state that we're looking to work within. Ready for the next piece? Yes. So you said, you know, as you go towards that process of, I really, really want to share uh, myself professionally. And he's saying one of the things that begins to happen and an obstacle comes up or some block begins to occur. And just curious before you model it, uh, Mike or York? Mike. Mike. So Mike, once again, Mike is called to be the demon. And would you be, would he be over here, over there? Over there. So we're saying in order for this goal to be realized, this state has to be open and this obstacle needs to be part of the creative team. And what trance does is it gives you a fluid place to hold multiple contradictions simultaneously. What would be his somatic model? Would he be like, you're, you were mentioning the, the blaming. So that, that part of you represented by Waikai says, yeah, I want to bring it. Would that be to other people, be to him, to that part of you? Yes, it's blocking that sharing. Yeah. So you say, don't even fucking think about it. <laughs> okay. okay, great. So now we come back to Eva. Do you see the system? Here's your, here's your question. As we start to talk about it, the obstacle comes up and the goal state begins to crash. So we go back, Eva, and any, anything you could say, you can bring not only your embodied present, but your voice, any simple verbal statements. I'm here. I'm here. And what would you be saying to this member of the team and this member of the team? I see you. I see you. You're important. And make sure that you don't just try to build up the positive self. Because this cynical motherfucker who's got all the power is just going to get more and more interested in breaking it all down. So you need to enroll this person into the team. So what would you say to Mike and start saying, hey, that's great. I'm so... It's great that you've come. I see you too. I see you too. And you're really important. You're really important. Okay, and it, you probably can't see, but he does this. So you're going to have to use some language that makes room for his cyn cynicism. You know, so I would, if you just use New Age positive language, I'm sure that you have a positive intention. I'll show you my fucking positive intention. <laughs> so you you got to have a little bit of the shadow language. Throw in your spice. Throw in your spice. And, uh, and, and he starts being curious. You see, he says, somebody's talking to me like I'm not an asshole. Okay? It's not the only thing you have to do, but you're waiting for that part to, to start tuning to you. Because you're talking, you're, you have an important presence to play here. You know, I'm welcoming you, and you are a cynical fuck, but that's really important that you are a cynical fuck, because one part of the system has to be a cynical fuck. I don't know if, if you all know the English, uh, that, uh, this means a part that thinks it's all fucking bullshit. 
You know, it's a whole bunch of fucking goddamn crap. That part is really in every system. You need to make it part of the team. Okay. The final member that we're going to focus on is resource. So, Jorg, if you can come up. You're always the nice resource. You come over <laughs> here. Oh, over here. And so, Chris, I would say, so as you go on that path, and you're always listening for this in the conversation, you're looking for any place where they say, this is a positive resource in my life. They might be talking about what they did yesterday and, and a friend that they met. You see that it's a resource. You're putting it on your shelf. We're going to need that. So you say, in order to do this, you, know, you say, okay, I want to go forward in my life. I've got this part of me that is just a cynical motherfucker. I've got this part of me that hoping I can do it. And who would be resources you think in your life, could be living people, could be ancestors. My grandfather. Your grandfather, yeah. Is he alive? No. So, Grandpa, what did you call your grandfather? Grandpa. Grandpa? Grandpa? Grandpa. Mm -hmm. Is that Greek? No. Papu. Papu. And what would Papu's, what would his somatic model be? What would he be saying? I believe in you. I'm breathing? I believe in you. Breathing? I believe. Believe, sorry. In you. I believe in you. I believe in you. So we've got what we call the core triad, goal, obstacle, resource. And what a trance allows you to do is hold all of them equally in the same space and allow each of them to find the best fit so that they make a, a creative team. Okay, so you want to try saying that? I believe in you. I believe in you. Can we, maybe you can pass that around. Uh, you. you can just hold it. Yeah. I believe in you. And I then, believe in you. Sorry. I'll try saying it to Jorg as the representative. Uh, sorry, to Waikai. I'm sorry. I believe in you. I believe in you. Okay, now let's, let's put these together. And what we do in trance is part of the function that this place has to create this loving, kind, vibrant, fluid field, is we bring in the resonance and we bring in boom, boom sometime. So, boom, boom. So, Eva, I'm going to ask you to be the opener of the trance field. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. Bom, bom. And as you feel that, you're just opening, we're entering into the place. What the Greeks would call temenos, a beautiful sacred place where transformation and healing would occur. So once we activate this space, there's something that you want. Sharing professionally, that's it. What I most want. Sharing professionally. 
And what a nice thing to know that each time that you do that, an old, old acquaintance will show up saying, You can't but do that. And this part, this is the, the trans practitioner, welcome. That's right. That nice part of you. Who really protecting safety. That's it. That's good. That's great. Going forward, recognizing boundaries. Going forward, recognizing boundaries. And then, when you need to, in beautiful awareness, you're not on this journey alone. Grandpa. I believe in you. Grandpa. I believe in you. Professional sharing. What I most want. I limits boundary in you. Sharing. I believe. I believe in you. What I most want. I and from there, you can begin to see a beautiful future. I begin to open sharing, feeling, stop, boom, boom. I believe, I believe in you. My dear granddaughter, Krisa, you can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. And then to find in that, we're, we're doing this in an accelerated way here. Believe. He says for you to ask your body to find a somatic model that integrates all of these into one movement. I am. I am the love of my grandfather. Believe in you. I am the determination to go forward and share. I am the fear that worries. I am the deeper pulse. Bom bom. So these parts that have been clashing and living in different spaces, we're looking to have them form a mosaic. That gives a deep, generative connection. That's great. That's great. And just feel where that touches and know that it's something you can come back to again and again and again. Take just a few moments and given our time limitation, you can begin the integration here that you can continue throughout the day. That's the sign of coming down from a spiritual orgasm. And when you come back, you can see, oh my God, 
And you, you were the tin man. And you, you were the scarecrow. And you were the lion. And it's so amazing, but I'm home. <laughs> I'm home. I'm home. Nice work if you can get it, huh? That's so cool, yeah. Can I have you all in my yeah. office? <laughs> Pretty expensive. <laughs> the Germans are more expensive than the Chinese, but they're going to catch up. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, let's, let's just get uh, here for, we got just a couple minutes. And, yeah, you, that was say, you can come yeah. here too. You, you guys get it. Okay, does that make sense, what we were just doing? Now so, you do it. Generative change is working with performance systems. Trance gives us a place to open this generative field where you can hold every part of the system, especially the contradictory ones, and it gives you the fluid form within and between so that you can reorganize and optimize the relational connections to a generative point. Is that great or what? Uh, is that great or what? <laughs> Any, anything you like to say and about that? I know we're kind of uh, kind of rushing through it, but it's always good to hear it from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That was a speed course, um, but I was up for the ride. And uh, what really happened, I, I cannot find the words to explain, but the feeling was, it's okay, it's all good. It's okay. It's okay. That, that's the underlying state that will allow us to go through the valences and vicissitudes, um, the ups and the downs, the, the difficult parts and, and, and the easy parts. We need this inner place, as, it's okay, I'm okay. And when we need to, we realize we have these different parts of our system that we're tuning into at different times to find our creative wholeness in each moment. Anything you want to add to that, Eva? Yeah. Well, I, I almost felt like I was a soundboard on a deeper level to what was happening. I could feel the trembling um, before you spoke about it. And I could feel, she said, I could feel her trembling. That's the state that we want to open, but also make sure we give human connection to. And I could really feel the, kind of the balancing dance between um, um, reconnecting to the coach field and, and making that available and to step back. So whenever a new element, a new player came in, I felt there was a need for a little bit more it's an in and out kind of a dance. Um, for me it was interesting, I was the last one to join in the group and um, I knew I would be the resource and I was sort of, when can I come into play? Mm -hmm. Sort of I was um, really waiting to support. Mm. And um, when you told about your grandpa, immediately I had this um, opening in my heart. And I, I don't know your grandpa, but it was just such a... I just wanted to spread loving flowers all over you and say, you can do it, you can do it. So um, there was such a deep wanting to support. And also I felt comfortable with the goal and the obstacle. I didn't have anything against the obstacle. It was okay to be there because I'm so resourceful, it's okay. Mm. That's funny, he was like that. He was always the goal and the obstacle. It's, it's all good. Mm. 
So this this relationship between the, these two parts in the system is obviously one of the most crucial ones. Is saying in my system, whenever I start to go towards something positive, this part shows up. And if we think, oh, I, I'm hoping it won't come, or I hope we push it away, or I'm in some sort of crash relationship, we're looking to bring that resor re resource to be able to shift this, and also the meta-presence that wasn't there at the earlier time when it became a conditioned pattern. So that we say, this will lead to this, which activates that, and when they are all breathing together, voila. Voila. I mean, they look like twin brothers. Yes, uh, as a goal in the beginning, I'm okay, I'm free. But then when the obstacle show up, I kind of, my space was squeezed. I cannot go free. But then, as you saying, the, to go back to the generative feel with Ava, I feel a little bit more comfortable and with uh, with yolk and everything just like fine and then he become another help, another strength, resource. So everything is like a, a yeah. soup. Yeah, it's just soup. going so yeah. very well. Yeah, and so if, if you notice, there are two different levels of positive presence we're bringing in. One is what the trance gives you is the systemic wholeness field, boom, boom. And then the resource gives you a specific balance for whatever the obstacle is. So those are two different levels that we're working. And finally... Okay, uh, I, I speak in Chinese, you, you translate. Okay. So, when I'm being an obstacle, I have a lot of worry. I'm afraid I cannot do it good. <laughs> <laughs> the internal process of a Chinese obstacle. Until I was seen, I was welcomed. My deepest presence is I want security, I feel secure, safe. I want to make sure I'm successful. I want to be valuable. This voice was recognized, was come to service. And I become more relaxed. So this space is what we're looking to open up in the generative conversation. Okay. And then within this space, we're just looking to invite every member of the team, everything that when you start to focus on where you want to go, what shows up. And each of these different parts of the team are all carry equal value. And Every, the, the success of the system depends on your willingness and your capacity to invite each of them to be part of the tea ceremony. So that's what we're doing with the work, and I think the trance just amplifies it and really helps you to tune into this, this underlying, what we're calling the coach state, that puts everything in, in generative form. It's a little different than booga booga booga. Uh, Pretty, it's always really interesting work to me. Okay, I know we've gone a little bit over. So, uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you.